So, we will start from last class. So, last class we already started looking at friction welding, right. So, we looked at the friction welding itself. Uh, this, there are various ways of you can apply a uh, load the, uh, as a function of uh, a direction with respect to the rotation, okay. So, we looked at the radial friction welding and then orbital friction welding, angular friction welding and linear friction welding. So, we looked at video as well, okay. So, radial friction welding, so what happens? So, either one of the, uh, the rods that is supposed to be welded, it is fixed and the other rod is rotated with respect to the fixed the rod the heat is generated and upon reaching uh, sufficient temperature the interface the offsetting force is given and then you make a joint. So, I brought one of the joints from um, our lab. So, this is actually a, a radial friction welder, okay. So, we keep one of the uh, rods fixed. So, in this case so this is fixed and this is rotated and then you do an offsetting and make a joint and subsequently we have done uh, uh, four, uh, three joints uh, joining four rods. Isn't it? So, the video I showed you already. So, when uh, the welding is done, so it is not done in I mean at once. So, there will be a process characteristics. So, we initially um, uh, uh, rotate and make some joint so that the surface becomes smoothened and subsequently we increase the upsetting force, the RPM, rotation forward and the uh, rotation speed and the upsetting force, right. So, if you can, if you, if you remove this flash and it look like an, uh, the actual rod itself, right. So, uh, whatever the surface contamination, the oxidation that happened at the rod is all removed and then it sent to the flash and you can machine it off the same diameter of the rod and it will be as good as uh, um, say any other uh, um, uh, say the homogeneous uh, rod itself, okay. So, this is stainless steel 316, okay. It is one of the difficult material to weld. So, we could weld it very easily by uh, 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 the radial friction welding. Right, it's clear. So we we'll after looking at the friction welding, we moved on to friction steel welding. So friction steel welding, the difference between friction and friction steel and friction welding. So you need uh, the interface itself is uh, rotating or moving with respect to the each other, isn't it? In friction steel welding, the interface to be welded, the fading interfaces, they don't really move. Instead, we have a tool which actually plunge into the uh, the interface and then rotates at the interface, creating a frictional heat. So, and uh, apart from the uh, heating, we also have a mechanical deformation, right. So, the, the tool itself deforms that carries the metal around the pin from one interface to other interface, right, it is clear. So, it is like you know inserting in a small nail at the interface and rotate the nail and there is an interface heating between the pin and the tool, uh, tool and the interface and uh, during this rotation and because of the high temperature material also heats up and it becomes easy to deform and the deformation happens and the material is carried forward from one interface to the other interface, is not it? It is clear, okay. So, in friction steel welding, so if you look at, so the important process parameters, say, say we looked at the shoulder itself and the pin. So, I am just drawing a very simple sketch of a uh, friction steel pin and the interface to be welded, so it is actually over there. So, pin is actually inserted onto the interface and then you make a mechanical deformation, is not it? So, this mechanical deformation happens from one interface to the other interface creating a, a, a joint at the interface and there are a lot of process characteristics, okay. So, the RPM of the tool itself the material, uh, tool material, okay. In most of the cases, we like to make it with uh, a material which does not soften at higher temperatures, right. And it is also have a very good wear resistance. So, that is the reason, you know, uh, uh, welding uh, uh, hard materials, even steels using fixed and steel welding process, it is difficult because the tool, it should withstand the, the temperature, the wear uh, that is happening uh, during welding. So, for aluminum alloys, it is uh, uh, highly used nowadays to make uh, uh, say uh, uh, longitudinal seam welding for various application using aluminum plates and sheets, right. And there are other process parameters uh, we were discussing for example, the, uh, the, the pin size, pin shape, uh, uh, the, the, the shoulder dimensions, right, the, the rotational uh, speed and the velocity of the welding, 
right? So the, all these things, pre heating, preheating and cooling will all influence the, uh, the welding characteristics. So generally in friction state welding, there are defined zones like in, uh, in a conventional fusion welder uh, material we have a heat affected zone, in the heat affected zone we also have a fine grain heat affected zone, coarse grain heat affected zone, okay, and then fusion zone. And friction state welding also you have a distinctive zones. We are going to do, not, we are not going to detail in that, but so we will just see an overview and then we will go further in this class, right, it's clear. So I also brought some sample, we will look at in after looking at the slides. So this is clear, right, a rotating tool it is actually plunged onto the sample and then uh, that the material is deformed at the interface and during this process, so it is uh, the high temperature enables uh, easy flow of material, mechanical behavior of material, okay, the, because material softens at high temperature. So now, so there are uh, some distinctive regions uh, along this uh, uh, weld interface and we looked at this slide in, in uh, last class. Uh, so when the tool is rotating along, in the, along this direction, so we have an advancing side and then it retracting side. Okay, so if it is rotating like this, so you have advancing side and then retracting side, isn't it? And then uh, the, the process parameter we looked at last class is rotational speed, okay, that is the RPM of the tool itself, and the welding speed or the travel speed and the shoulder profile, pin profile, okay, and the relative size of the pin to the shoulder and that will all influence the, the flow of material as well as the frictional heat generation. So angle of insertion and pre-heating and cooling and plunge depth. So plunge depth means how deep the tool is actually penetrating the material. So generally we are keeping, if a thickness is 10 mm, we have a slight uh, material left at the bottom because it has to flow, otherwise you may have a swagging of the pole, okay. So the, the plunge depth is always less than the thickness of the material, okay, so plunge depth so that you now we can achieve uh, uh, at the bottom a good finish, otherwise you may have a, a swagging. What is swagging is, some, so you may have a sort of a material is flowing and in the top you may have a some concave cavities. So we always keep the plunge depth slightly lower than the depth thickness of the plates you are welding. Good. So we will go in further in the friction steel welding process, okay. So some of the pin profiles what you see over here. So these are commonly used uh, pin uh, profiles uh, what you use. Um, so generally the, uh, if you have smoother interface obviously you know you also uh, generate less heat because the friction may not be sufficient and material flow behavior can be changed by changing the uh, uh, pin profile, okay. So I have uh, one example, so this is aluminum, aluminum to aluminum weld. So this is the starting uh, position what you see over here. Okay, so uh, so this was done with I think uh, the uh, the hexagonal um, pin. It's not there. So you initially you plunge the pin inside, and there is always an, uh, uh, some waiting time. So you establish uh, the heating. Okay, once the heating is established, and then uh, you continuously move the pin along the interface until you finish welding. So you always have uh, uh, this drilling effect, the plunge when it actually inserted onto the interface. So you always have some cavity. So you have to machine off the initial starting position and, and also the ending positions as well, right. So if you look at the bottom, so interface you do not see because the plunge depth we always maintain slightly lower than the, uh, 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 smaller than the thickness of the plate, so the plunge depth. But that will also influence the uh, the well seam. If flange depth is higher, so you may also have a more deformation is happening at the interface. Okay, so by controlling the plunge depth, and if you spend more time, for example, the speed of welding is low, so you also heat up the material more. So material flow will be higher. Right. So the the well metal properties can be changed by changing all these parameters. What I showed in last slide. Okay, the speed of rotation, travel speed the shoulder profile and the ratio or the size between the pin and shoulder and that will also influence the frictional heat generation and the mechanical deformation, the material flow across the interface, right. So that will all influence the uh, uh, well formation, okay. So as I said this is very widely used for aluminum alloys because aluminum alloys generally they are actually very, uh, what do you call, uh, knotty. 
to when you are doing it in a, uh, using arc welding because of hard cracking issues, uh, the issues uh, with uh, uh, thermal conductivity okay, and distortion, stress generation and uh, uh, the precipitation not and aluminum alloys, they have a severe softening uh, the fusion zone you will have to do and a personal heat treatment. So until um, uh, uh, 90s, welding of aluminum alloys was considered challenging and we had to use various uh, uh, techniques uh, to avoid hot cracking issues during uh, the welding of aluminum alloys. So once the fiction stair weld uh, you know, came into picture, so for most of the uh, uh, applications which requires a longitudinal welding, like uh, the video I showed you for making an aircraft uh, fuselage, okay, structures which demand uh, uh, a, a very large seam welding. So, uh, so nowadays um, our uh, uh, PSLV, GSLV, okay, so uh, the outer body, um, these are all 4 or 5 meters uh, aluminum sheets are welded longitudinally the seam. Okay, so those are all welded with friction steel welding. Okay, so in uh, almost all the aluminum uh, plates used in aircraft being an Airbus or, uh, or Boeing. Uh, so all the components which actually uses aluminum sheets, plates, and they are all fixed and steel welded. Okay, but because it's yeah you can achieve uh, reasonably good weld, very stable mechanical properties uh, at the the weld zone, and th there is no significant softening of the welds uh, because uh, at this uh, 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 yeah like a steel zone what do you call it? Okay, so you also have uh, 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 severe uh, grind refinement because of the dynamic recrystallization. Okay, so you have a, a deformation uh, and the deformation is done in a very high strain rate. Okay. So for aluminum alloys generally you know after heat treatment, so if you have a, 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 what do you call it a T6 heat treatment. Okay. So you will have in space not in material, T6 means, what is T6? Hmm? So let us nice and artificially aged. Okay, so that is heat treatment. Okay, so metallurgy. Okay, sorry guys. So uh, material is already uh, aged. Okay, so when you do infusion welding, at the heat affected zone, uh, you have a coarsening of precipitates, leading to a severe softening, isn't it? But in friction steel welding, and because of the the mechanical deformation, would also lead to the grind refinement, and then the temperature at which you know, it reached can be controlled. So you will not have a severe uh, coarsening of precipitates. So we can, uh, there will be some softening, but because of uh, the mechanical uh, deformation what you uh, subject, so you may also solutionizing subsequently you may also have a precipitation okay, upon uh, welding, right, it is clear, so it is done, yes. Uh, by welding this, mm. like these were two different sheets, right? Yes. And when they got connected mm. and we welded, not connected, when they, yeah, welded. When, when they were welded, yeah. In case of arc, this surface tension that fills the down thing. But Not down here, thing, okay. So you mean the well cavity? Uh, yeah. Yeah, the, that's the beneath the weld. I mean, uh, the, the weld is this. What do you mean by beneath yeah, the weld? Uh, like the down part. This part. If this is the weld, yeah. here it should be oh, what control, uh, like joining of this. Yeah, so the material is flowing only along the plane. Okay, so you see, uh, you look at the, the the microstructure. Okay, so you see over here. So what you see over here is uh, the various zones which I'm going to cover. And anyway, you asked the question. So so this, what you see over here, it is a sister zone. Right. So when uh, the plunge, is, the pin is actually plunged into the material. We always maintain some gap from the from the bottom. Okay, so the plunge depth is always lower than the thickness, right? So when uh, material is rotating, so the is rotational direction. So the only the advancing rotating side only, okay? Because the pin is going to rotate and the mechanical deformation can is going to happen, okay? Along, I mean, be, because of the centrifugal motion of the pin, which would carry the material from advancing side to rotating side, right? So your question is why it's not going down? My question is how is the bottom part being welded when there's no surface tension, no molten metal? Yeah. How is the bottom part being? Welded? So you also have uh, some material beneath the pin would also be deforming it, right? So 
so it will not be only at the uh, the tangential direction so you also have some material here as well okay so that will also be moved right so so along the uh, circumferential direction i mean uh, tangential direction we will also have some material at the bottom as well it will be stir right so the gap between uh, the pin tip uh, to the bottom thickness will be very minimal so you can't keep it. otherwise you will have a, 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 a just a drill isn't it if a, a plunge is actually coming out of the pin is coming out of the other surface i mean that's not effective isn't it so you will just make a cut right so you need to maintain some gap and uh, that is good enough so material is also going to uh, flow beneath the pin as well right so you are going to make um, yeah well so if you are if your plunge depth is really minimal so you may not see uh, i mean you may see still interface at the bottom okay so now this this, this just enough so there is not extra material uh, which has to be machined off but you don't see the interface you see the interface at the at the edge here but these regions you don't see the interface so the plunge depth is carefully controlled in this uh, well in such a way that the interface is disappearing you have just enough flow okay which controls the swagging as well isn't it so now the interface is looks smooth i don't see any extra material at the bottom okay just enough if you have extra material obviously you will also see cavity here because it's mass balance material has to be sent from one end to other end unless you are taking out so this is perfectly welded uh, affix the welded lamin plate right so uh, but yeah so you have to machine of this very region you can't use it so you will cut it out and then if you polish or if you just mill it about uh, mm and you don't see joint okay so you will not see in nakadai the joint unless you see the microstructure inside you will see this so what are the regions you see so this is the well nugget so this is steel zone okay in the steel zone you see uh, grain refinement generally in aluminum aluminum alloys the hardness will be higher than the, the rest of the zones and just at the boundaries of steel zone so you also see thermo mechanically affected zone okay so in this case the temperature uh, will be much higher and when you move away from well center line okay so you also see a thermo mechanically affected zone that means that you also have some mechanical deformation but that is not sufficient to cause a plastic flow okay so you see uh, some deformation and uh, uh, effect of temperature because the temperature can also rise significantly but the temperature is not that significant to cause any recrystallization also you will just see uh, only a deformed zone and uh, you have uh, a material uh, which has some cold deformation right it's clear and then if you move away and you also have uh, some heat of inter zone so you don't see any mechanical deformation but you still see some temperature effect uh, because the heat is actually dissipated from well center line so the temperature distribution will be similar to arc welding so you'll have a maximum temperature okay so in the fusion zone and it will be going down like this is it it yes it's clear so in a, in a conventional arc welding so you have fusion zone and the heat affected zone but he, in this case you also have a, an additional zone which we know as thermo mechanically affected uh, zone okay the pin profile so these are some of the pin profiles uh, which we use in our lab but there are like i said i mean tons of volumes of uh, um, manuscripts uh, literature is published in friction and welding last 20 years and people have figured out you know changing various pin profiles uh, shoulder profiles uh, the uh, relationship i mean ratio between the pin and to uh, pin and shoulder depth and uh, yeah material of uh, the pin and uh, yeah manufacturing processes various manufacturing process they used to i mean change the properties of the pin uh, uh, with respect to the shoulder but these are some of the pins generally we use see and uh, you may also have some profiling at the pin for example you can also have a, a neutral fold okay so where you have an hexagonal uh, structure okay 
or you can also have a left hand fluids or even right hand fluids and this will influence uh, the mechanical behavior as well as the temperature heat generation right and you see the profiles various profiles people have tried and optimized uh, for uh, uh, achieving a, a good uh, well seam and the properties good any questions so far okay so we'll move on to the next so this is a pin in action so one of the pins uh, what you see over here so pin profile um, and uh, so you have a shoulder here okay and then this is the pin and this is rotating along uh, the clockwise if it is clockwise so you have advancing side and it is in the uh, attracting side and you see uh, the depth is not controlled so in this case we are doing it in both sides so this is the bottom side and this is top side right in some cases if thickness is higher and in this case for example uh, so the welding is done in both sides and top and bottom so you do a welding on top and reverse is and then uh, uh, you do it in other side okay so so this is uh, the steel zone you see over there and you have an uh, so this is region so this is tmz right and then you have a heat affected zone yes it's clear okay good so this i explained it's the various zones that are present in a friction steel welding okay so you have a steel zone so where you have a mechanical plastic deformation as well as the temperature and the heating effect both will cause uh, um, a dynamic crystallization simultaneously okay and then if you move away from the, the boundary between the steel uh, uh, and the heat affected zone so you have a thermomechanically uh, affected zone okay and then if you move further uh, you don't see any uh, real mechanical deformation you'll see only the effect of temperature okay so that's we call it a heat affected zone yes it's clear good so what are the positions that can be uh, you know, welded using a friction steel so one of the the major disadvantage of friction steel welding so the accessibility okay so you cannot uh, uh, in same as resistance part welding you cannot weld it you know, when uh, uh, you can't access the joint uh, with a pin and shoulder isn't it so you need a reasonable accessing otherwise you know, how are you going to insert uh, uh, and a shoulder and pin and then make a linear weld so in most of the cases we can change the positions we can play around the geometry of the weld in such a way that you can still achieve the weld so this is the, the most used configuration so that's a butt weld okay so if it is t joint generally in t joint arc welding we we do a fillet weld isn't it okay so similarly what you see over here but you can also do in this case in friction spot welding so you attach in clamp it and then do a steel a butt weld and such a weld welding in a, in a arc welding case it is not advisable right so you can also do yeah same configuration so you can also do an and um, the two wells and in, you can achieve an a t configuration or in this case uh, uh, overlap joints okay so you can uh, also make make sure that you know you have some mechanical deformations happening at the bottom plate as well so we can have an, a simple overlap joint without any preset gap okay and multi sheets so so this kind of uh, layer by layer deposit so in this case it's not really in a friction free from fabrication but we stack layers in these layers and then uh, do a friction welding okay so and uh, yeah so various configuration it is done and this is bit tricky so t joint configuration so you have to make sure that you know pin is plunging onto the interface and the interface should be you know, clamped so that's why you know when i presented uh, uh, started this unit the tooling allowable tooling we need to have so in this case if uh, if, uh, if load is the clamping loading is not maintained it's going to deform isn't it so then the weld uh, integrity will not be achieved so you may have when uh, defects uh, in overlaps good so these are the positions and uh, so compared to all the positions this is most commonly used it's a simple uh, butt joint butt weld right it's clear good so there are some uh, various very uh, modifications as i said last 20 years people have tried so many and people also you know use nowadays uh, friction steel uh, to weld plastics woods wood solid wood 
Uh, so they are all welded using friction. Okay. Uh, so for plastics, um, so one process actually right now it is commercialized. It's called vibe um, uh, blade or whip blade welding. So how it is dug? Actually, it is very simple. So what it is done is you now we insert in a small blade, steel blade into the faying interface. Okay. So this blade goes inside, and then you have a vibration. So you have a, a, a linear vibration. Okay. So linear friction. The blade is vibrating, but you have downward force. So blade vibrates and generates heat, and you also apply uh, some pressure. So once the temperature reached, you, you, you do a uh, slight uh, pressure so that the material can flow with the temperature. Okay. So the, so you have a downward force, and this is the tool. What you see over here, so, and then you insert in a small uh, the blade. You see here, isn't it? So these are attached to the tool. You clamp two plates. So in this case, web blade is commonly used for plastics. So this pla this blade actually vibrates, okay, along the interface, and simultaneously you vibrate, and the entire tool is moving, isn't it? So this vibrating uh, blade causes the interface to heat, and uh, the, the 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 plastic at the interface it starts flowing, makes a joint. Right? Okay, so that's possible. So uh, there are equipment now available to join woods, wooden blocks, and plywoods by uh, linear friction welding. So one block is kept, and the other block is vibrated, and you apply in a downward force, and you can join uh, two wooden blocks. Okay, so the friction enables the heating and uh, uh, localized flow of uh, wooden particle. Passing in a joint, right? So bamboos, uh, they are also welded using an angular rotation welding. Uh, so you, yeah, so I've seen uh, uh, various uh, videos my students used to forward. So there is an, uh, an uh, welding for a bamboos you know, using an angular friction uh, welding. Okay, yeah. So the other variants, uh, instead of have a linear reciprocating uh, motion, so you also have a vertical reciprocating motion. Okay, you still have the blade, but instead of going uh, uh, a linear way, so you also have a vertical going up and down, isn't it? And this can also cause heating at the interface. So the clamping, clamping of the plates enables mechanical deformation across the interface, and you end up making a joint. Yes, it's clear. So ultimately, all the process parameters are important. What I talked about, okay? So in this case, uh, the the vibrational frequencies, right? And the blade configuration. It's having flat blade. You can also have some profile on the blade. Okay, that can change the uh, local heating as well as the deformation mechanism of the interface. Okay, so, and then uh, the amplitude of uh, vibration. So in, in uh, the, the 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 pin material itself. Pin to shoulder uh, ratio. Okay, so all these process parameters would carefully be controlled to achieve uh, a, a nice well like this. Yes. Any questions so far? Yes sir. No. Nope. Okay. We'll move on to the some of the uh, theories, and then we'll move to the next welding process. Right. So, so friction steel welding. So, what are the advantages? So main advantage of friction steel welding is, in my opinion, so you can weld a softer material, a material which can flow easily, right, or material which softens easily with the temperature. Okay, so aluminium alloy. Okay, I mean it softens significantly when the temperature is increased. So right, and uh, the material uh, with uh, good ductility at elevated temperature can be welded very easily uh, using friction steel welding. Okay, and we can increase the productivity. So, for example, in this case, so this is about for, say 5 mm thick. So, if you are using an, an, a simple uh, gas nut, gas tank snark welding, so you need to have a filler uh, unless you use a plasma. Okay, so that, that increases the time of welding, also cost. 
right. But in this case, the welding is achieved a significantly less time without using any filler material, right. That means that productivity increases, and especially in a, if you increase the thickness in further in a conventional fusion welding, so you have to use multiple passes, and there are a lot of problems associated with the uh, fusion welding itself, right. So, and you can achieve a continuous seam welding. So, welding can be done continuously uh, infinite distance as long as you have a, a proper tooling in place, okay. And uh, the most of the cases we do not generate flat, a uh, flash especially in friction steer. In friction welding you still have a flash, is not it? So, this friction weld as I showed in, uh, in the class, but you will have to remove the flash, right. In friction steer you do not need to remove the flash. Okay, so, only thing is during the start you may spend some time the initial waiting period to achieve the uh, enough heating. So, you will have to just machine off the, the start position and the process can be automated. So, you can also have a robot, it is, it is a machining in a way. So, you have a drilled uh, a milling machine and drilling machine can be converted into an friction stair. So, you can also achieve a complex geometries the weld in uh, various configuration in butt weld, okay. So, what are disadvantages? So, only linear wells cannot do it in an angle, right. So, it for materials which do not flow or hard materials it is difficult. For steels for example, it is difficult to achieve, right. So, other than that in, a, in the biggest problem in a fiction series is this, this hole at the end, okay. So, when you when the pin is coming out you always see this effect, is not it, okay. So, so this is okay, this is uh, reasonably good, but in most of the cases you always see the both, you see uh, the, the effect of uh, pin geometry. Good. So, uh, in, in friction welding in general what are the advantages compared to the arc welding? It is not only friction, uh, friction steel. So, the biggest benefit of friction is surface cleanliness, preparation you do not need, okay, because you can clean the surface by yourself. So, that is why you have initial time, okay. So, when if you look at the process characteristics, we do not apply load uh, no, immediately. So, you can have a, uh, an awaiting time where initially you can smoothen the surface, remove all the contamination, okay. So, that is possible and no need to add any extra filler material, fluxes, shielding gas. So, it becomes cheaper. Right? So, you do not need to add any filler and flux. So, you do not have solidification microstructure at the weld. So, the, the, all the problems, cracking issues uh, and segregation uh, associated with the solidification, they are not, not there. Okay? So, you do not have uh, hot cracking or inclusion formation or some porosity formation. Okay? And it is also possible to make an, uh, uh, a transitional joint. So, suppose if you are welding a two dissimilar material, so aluminum and steel, okay. So, you can also have a transition layer which, lay, which is actually compatible in both material, right. So, in most of the cases when you are welding steel and aluminum, it is always good to have a galvanized layer because the zinc is compatible with both aluminum and steel. So, the joint integrity will be much better, okay. Or you can also try uh, for example, have a butter layer and you can deposit uh, say aluminum copper and then copper ion you can deposit or uh, aluminum nickel copper, uh, aluminum nickel steel. So, you can also it is also possible to make a transition joints, okay. So, that you know uh, uh, at, the, at the interface say possible intermetallic formation can be avoided. The other major advantage is low labor cost, good. So, we will move on. So, what are the disadvantages? So, there must be some symmetry, is not it in friction welding, right. So, if uh, this rod, one rod is slightly larger than the other rod, the diameter is larger and it is very difficult to weld, is not it? So, you will not achieve unless you know it is very difficult, unless you do an angular weld or orbital weld. So, you need some symmetry at the interface, especially friction stair if dissimilar thicknesses it is very difficult to achieve, right. So, you cannot do it in a slight overlap configuration unless 
yeah, so you need to study arrive at the welding procedures, right. So, some symmetries should be there. So, if you need an uh, I mean some extent it can be overcome by fixed and stair, but still you cannot go for an, uh, a highly unsymmetrical uh, interfaces uh, by friction welding, ok. So, it is uh, not all the configuration is possible, ok, especially you know in a friction studies generally it is not avoided if you for a uh, circular pipe configurations. It is very difficult to do, do continuous seam welding in a 5G configuration, ok. So, flat, angular, some extent and butt configuration as showed in the previous uh, slides, ok. And the major drawback, drawback of friction, friction series is a material itself, ok. So, material should plastically deform, is not it? Uh, so, if material is hard, it does not really soften, so for example, super -alize. So, these are the shortcomings of the friction welding itself.